So, uh, so what I'm going to do first is we're going to talk about, uh, well firstly, let me firstly welcome you to the channel, all 634 of you, and uh, we're going to talk about Dr. Sieg Siegbert Tarash. Um, he was one of the greatest players of the uh, 1890s, I believe. And for a bit of a breakdown on Dr. S Dr. Tarash, the great Dr. Tarash, he was probably at one stage the strongest player in the world. He'd beaten Steinitz, the world champion, as he was getting older, about three times. And uh, he, he, he uh, couldn't really play for the world title because of his commitments to his medical practice. I have got my stethoscope, but I'm not a doctor. <laughs> but he was a real doctor, Dr. Siegbert Tarash. Anyway, what we're going to do first is we're going to go into Wikipedia and just find out a little bit about him, okay? So find out a little bit about Dr. Tarash. Uh, there he is, Sir Egg, Siegbert Tarash. Uh, he's in Wikipedia. So you can just type in Tarash and have a look at Wikipedia. There's a good photograph of him there. That was Dr. Tarash. And uh, he was uh, a great theoretician. Um, and uh, he was German. Uh, uh, he was actually born in Poland, uh, in Breslau, Kingdom of Prussia now Roquel, Poland, and he was born in, uh, uh, oh, sorry, he was born 5th of March 1862, and he died at 71 years of age, which is a good good age in those days, I suppose, um, uh, uh, in 1934. Um, he, as I say, he was a German chess player, and he was considered to be among the strongest ones. And one of the most influential chess theoreticians of the late 19th and 20th century. And he wrote quite a few books. So he was, uh, he was a bit of an author. And uh, he settled in Nuremberg in Bavaria. And he studied medicine. And uh, yeah, he loved his, his doctor's practice that much. that Even though he loved his chess, uh, he preferred to look after his patients like a good doctor does rather than um, be able to uh, play for the world chess title. So it may have cost him a world chess title because at one stage there, he was probably the best player in the world. So he's another one of those greats that never quite became world champion. And uh, af after that, he missed his opportunity because along came Dr. Emmanuel Lasker. And we all know that Dr. Emmanuel Lasker was a absolutely dynamite world chess champion and uh, he uh, controlled chess for some time. So Tarash was a very influential chess writer. Uh, he was also known as something else in Germany like the father of chess or, so, or something. Um, it's very interesting uh, but uh, yeah he was like the father. There's even a Dr. Uh, Tarash chess trap. But uh, what I've done is I've uh, created a few games uh, from him. Um, I'll just go, yeah, so uh, I did read this. It might have been on, oh, here it is, um, Chess Teachings. Tarash was a very influential chess writer and was called Preceptor Germanae, meaning teacher of Germany. What a great title to have, you know, being called the teacher of Germany. So, I mean, really, I mean, that would have done a lot for his ego. And they did say that uh, 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 Siegbert Tarash had a big ego. So, but uh, it was that, that good that he was entitled to have an ego. That was the Wikipedia photograph I found of Tarash. But I did find another really good photo I want to share with you of Dr. Trash on chessgames.com. So I'm just going to go over there and have a look at chessgames.com. And I'm going to show you this other photo. It's a fantastic photo. Excuse 
excuse me, I just got a little bit of a runny nose. Um, Tarash There we go. Ah, here we go. Tarash. Uh, it doesn't show. Uh, player profile, Siegbert Tarash. Here he is. So we've got a few photographs of him there. Um, not the uncensored wedding pics, but uh, here's a good photograph of him here. I found an even better one that I'm going to post on my YouTube channel of him. I hope you can see that photo. Just one second. I'll be with you in one second. <laughs> ah, right. So um, my apologies. Right. So I'm going to move that, that photo uh, photograph across so you can see it. There he is. That was Dr. Siegberg Tarash actually playing on a chess set there, right? And uh, so I just thought I'd show you that photo photograph as well. Uh, but I did gain one other photograph, which I can't quite show you, but it'll be on my YouTube channel, okay? I'll just adjust that screen. Right, and uh, with that, I'm just going to go back here. Whoa! And uh, try to put the board back. Go back to uh, here. Right, and uh, I'll get out of that one. And we'll go back to chessgames.com. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the uh, analysis room. And in the analysis room, not the analysis, oh, wrong one, live chess, archives, chess archives. Yeah, what I did was I transcribed a couple of games for you, for your enjoyment. <laughs> and uh, I, I want to share these games with you. Just want to make sure you can see the board okay. Uh, right, I'm going to the library, the chess library. And now, whoa, where's the library? Just library, there we are. Um, yeah, I've got my games versus, i got Alaska. Uh, I'm going to show you a game versus Alaska first. Um, yeah, he had a match with Alaska. Uh, he finally, finally played for the world title against Alaska, but Alaska was too good for him, Emmanuel Lasky. So Alaska basically trounced him a bit. So that was it. A bit unfortunate for Dr. Tarash. Um, so uh, here we go. We're going to look at this game um, that I've, I've got here for you. Um, just want to bring it up. Just want to get it on full size so we can get the damn thing up. Where is it? Arrgh. Okay, go into the analysis room. This is the chess analysis room. So go in there. So I've got the game Siegberg Tarash versus uh, us Sh Shigore in wrong one. Ah! Don't want to spoil it for you. I wanted to put the, the first game in that I wanted to show you was uh, Dr. Tarash versus uh, Emmanuel Lasker. So I've got to go back. Archive. Doesn't matter the best laid plans of mice and men. Um, how did I get that? Trash versus uh, Alaska. <coughs> okay. Try again. <clears throat> and uh, we'll go into the analysis room for that one. So we're taking this game into the analysis room. So if you ever transcribe a game <coughs> that you like, you might like a particular game or you, you think that's important, that might uh, fit in with your chess repertoire, it's, uh, you can always save those games. You can transcribe them from um, wherever you played them or record them uh, in your chess, as, as, as long as you've got the full membership and everything else. Right, so, uh, yeah. And uh, here we go. So we're playing a game, Siegberg Trash versus Emmanuel Lasker. This is from the uh, World Championship played in Munich. It says Munich, but it says <laughs> my typing error. <coughs> played in the World Championship match. And I, I chose a game that uh, Dr. Tarash won. He actually got a trouncing, but uh, he won this game. And um, Gary uh, Kasparov said that this was probably... Dr. Tarash's best game against 
the then world uh, or the uh, uh, Emmanuel Lasker for the world title. Okay, so e4 was played, and the opening is the King's Pawn opening. As I say, it was played in uh, Germany, and Knight f3. And uh, you know what? Uh, uh, Emmanuel Lasker had a match against Shigor and the great uh, Mikhail Shigorin, or Shigorin, and uh, that, I'll show you that match next. But uh, I found that uh, Dr. Tarash was particularly deadly with the uh, Roy Lopez. So he was very, very handy when he was playing the Roy Lopez. That was his strength, I think. If you want to study his games, right? Uh, Knight takes pawn. Uh, we have the Berlin. The Berlin. Uh, D4 was played. Uh, Bishop E7. And the whole idea is black just wants to recover his pawn. White played queen to e2. Very good developing move for beginners. This is a sort of good developing move that you can make. Uh, put your queen on in a more active square. And straight away you're on the e-file. And you can recapture your pawn with uh, comfort and safety. He takes the knight. Now why would he take the knight? Well, he's trying to displace the pawn structure. And he wants a tempo with pawn takes pawn. Um, there is uh, a bit of theory uh, involved, modern theory. Uh, I think it's, uh, is it Wesley So? Um, I, I attribute to Wesley So one of the variations where rook e1 was played uh, in, in the same sort of position, but the rook, instead of the queen on e2, modern theory, I think the rook on e1, and then after uh, d takes c6, after d takes c6, if the rook is here, and the queen back here, <coughs> then after pawn takes pawn, queen takes queen check, takes and takes, and white gets a slight initiative against the Berlin. Pawn takes pawn, so I believe. Knight to b7. So, uh, Emmanuel Lasker, uh, you've got to remember, they played a different style of chess then. They were still at that stage, it was back in the 1800s, they were forming uh, chess theory at that stage. So if there's, if you say, oh, but that doesn't look like the latest theory, well, don't forget, it's played in, eight, in the 1800s, right? Uh, knight to c3. Okay, and uh, castles. Right? Now, uh, White's got his pieces developed, and he says, well, how do I proceed here? Notice that the uh, chess engine, the bar on the side of the board, is giving us a bit of a guide from chess.com because we are in the chess.com analysis room. And, uh, and I love the chess.com analysis room. I'll tell you what, what a marvellous tool. Uh, rook to e1, because I never had this when I was a, a young man uh, playing chess. I never had these wonderful tools to help me improve my game. So you guys are really, really fortunate. Especially the younger ones that are just coming into this. It uh, opens up a whole new world. Now you see the, the knight's gone on a bit of a tour, hasn't it? Right? The knight's gone on a tour. It's uh, uh, it's uh, moved around quite considerably. Um, the knight's moved here. It's moved there. It's moved there. So he's moved the same piece three times in the opening. But I don't know whether this was considered theory at the time. But uh, Emmanuel Lasker was a great world champion, so uh, he had some idea. Knight d4. Here, here we can see the some of the ideas behind queen to e2. I like the idea that the rook could, could go to d1. Threatening knight takes pawn, right? Because the rook could then take the queen if the pawn recaptured. Oh, I just like the way the white pieces are placed. And as I say, the engine saying slight initiative for white. Knight to e6. Uh, uh, Black's hoping that uh, white will just exchange knights. He's got the two bishops. He's thinking, oh, if I get out with an open end game with my two bishops, boy, I'll be fighting. Emmanuel Lasker, he knows, he understood chess. 
Bishop e3. This is a good developing move. Um, you, you could have you could have played knight to f5, but uh, after d5, you didn't really have any advantage. Uh, so it's really important that white develop his pieces at this stage. Knight takes knight, and the bishop recaptures. Now, um, in this position, um, it, c5 looks natural, chase the bishop back, but that creates a hole for the knight. So what does black play? Well, he, play, he plays it, the bishop goes back. He wants space because he knows, right? With his experience, Emmanuel Lasker, uh, great world champion that he was, he understood that you uh, had to have open lines for the bishops. So he tries to break out with d5, give himself lovely open lines for, the, for his two bishops, you see. Anyway, uh, pawn takes pawn. Uh, white's trying to disrupt the pawn structure, and it, white likes this hole for his knight, if he can get it in quickly. The bishop takes. Now, the reason why the bishop takes it is if the pawn takes, the knight can just nicely jump into the hole. So he takes with the bishop and he tries to get a um, unbalanced position where um, Dr. Lasker thinks he might be able to uh, uh, draw the game or outplay his opponent with the two bishops if his opponent seeks too much from the position. Knight to e4, very strong move, um, threat, simply threatens bishop takes pawn. Right? Very powerful threat. White plays bishop b7. Now, if the knight takes the bishop, it's a trap. Right? There's a trap there. I'll show you. If knight takes pawn, bishop takes knight, bishop takes bishop, and queen here threatens checkmate and the bishop. And uh, you get a, you wouldn't lose a piece um, but because you can actually play in that position. You can actually play queen here. But you get really bad pawn structure and the position would probably end up being a draw at best, right? Oh, no, no. If you play queen here, yeah. Yeah, the position would probably be a, uh, a draw at best, probably. Okay, so, so what does he do? So he can't, so bishop b7, he can't play knight takes pawns. What does he take, do? He takes the bishop. And he says, well, we'll have bishops of opposite colours. So Dr. Tarash, he was already losing the match. He thought, well, I'll, uh, what I'll do is I'll uh, try to um, uh, just play this position. See how it goes. Because uh, he's got very good pawn structure. I always talk about pawn structure when I'm um, playing chess uh, and streaming. And I say the importance of the end game and the pawn structure, it can't be underestimated. But here, this position, I think uh, most players would, most uh, grandmasters would say the position is pretty equal. Pawn takes, and now I think we've got an even position. Uh, C4 was played. If you're going to seek an advantage, we'll try to t tie the pawn down. See if you can attack that base pawn. Uh, and, and so uh, the whole idea is if you push this pawn, now bishop takes pawn can be played. There are still problems with it, still problems. But uh, uh, black has to be a bit careful. But the position, it should be a draw with best play. Uh, the engine's saying white's got an advantage. Queen f6. Uh, rook on the uh, A file to D1, excellent move. Just simply putting pressure on the D pawn and stopping D, the move D5 in some variation. Rook E8, and this is a really important move because it pins the bishop to the queen. All right. And uh, if he could just get rook here and he could get the pawn there, pawn there move, moving in that position, he really, black, really needs to get out of uh, his mess. Um, in this position, I like rook e6. We'll see what's played. Bishop c6. I don't like this move. It doesn't seem to achieve much at all. I, I, I prefer rook uh, e6. Trying to defend the d-pawn along the uh, rank. 
and uh, might be able to change queens uh, on g6, right? Uh, queens on g6 with their pressure on the pawn, okay? Uh, bishop c6, I, I can't see the point of that move. Let's have a look and see what the engine says about rook e6. Uh, it's a better move. It's, it's slightly better. Not much difference in it. Bishop c6. <coughs> My move's better. Uh, right, so rook e2. And it only takes one little error in these types of positions. And uh, even though the position is drawish, you could lose it. Now, Dr. Tarash, I say Dr. Lasker, Dr. Emmanuel Lasker, they're both doctors. Battle of the doctors, isn't it, eh? Doctor who? No, not that doctor. Uh, right. A queen moves back. Black's looking for a knockout with rook here and rook takes pawn check. <coughs> So he, he, Black tries to set a trap. See how the, the, the pawn can be taken here? So he played queen e6. Now you think, oh, but that allows rook takes pawn. Well, after rook takes pawn, you can always take this one. But uh, white doesn't take the pawn. White just plays h3. He opens his uh, back rank. The reason being, I don't think uh, I don't think um, White liked this move. Rook here, he didn't like that move coming. See, if Rook takes pawn, Queen takes pawn would be a counter attack threatening this rook, and, and uh, he doesn't like the counter attack. H three. Now he move, he plays Rook to D eight. He doesn't like Rook to D six. <laughs> And now the rooks are doubled on the d-pawn. Well, now it's probably time to uh, bite. It's a bad position. These white squares are going to come into play here with his bishop. It's a bad position. White's got a big advantage according to the chess engine. Rook to e5. He's just blocking off the attack on the d-pawn. He's trying to hold. And now comes this brilliant move. Bishop to h3. Right? Bishop to h3. Now, if you take the bishop, right, if you take the bishop, the queen could take the rook, I think. I think. Bishop takes bishop. He played bishop to h6. Why can't you take the bishop and then take this rook? I think, I think there's a little bit of a, 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 an idea here. We're threatening checkmate. What's wrong with queen takes bishop? What did he play? He played queen g6. Now what happens if he plays queen takes bishop? White wins. And how does white win? Oh, queen takes rook. And then you, you just take this rook, but you only, you don't have to move your queen. You just take the rook back because this one's still pinned. And, uh, yeah, so you just, you're a queen. you got a queen extra, right? So you can't take the, the bishop. Okay, nice move. Threatening the checkmate and you can't take the bishop, right? I'll, I'll make that clear for you, right? Queen there. Oh, you're right. This is why. Queen takes bishop, right? Queen takes rook. Now, you can't take this one because the back rank checkmate. You know all your um, chess puzzles. You're doing your chess puzzles, I hope. Right, and then queen takes rook. Or just simply rook takes queen. And now you can't take this one because of rook takes rook checkmate. Right? So bishop rook, uh, bishop rook six was played. Excellent move. Queen g6, good move. Bishop mo moves back, attacks the rook. Now black has got some problems with this d-pawn. And we know that once the d-pawn falls, the bishop will be attacking the c-pawn. 
And uh, even though they've got bishops of opposite colours, if you get two pawns, um, you could be losing the game. <laughs> so what did the good uh, uh, world chess champion Emmanuel Lasker do? He played rook e6. He protected the pawn. Bishop takes pawn. Queen to h5. He's his back rank looks a bit weak, doesn't it, eh? Queen to g4. So what he's saying is, uh, uh, I've got a better game than you. I've got six pawns, and you've only got five, and you've got a pawn on c. This pawn here is uh, very fatally weak. Takes, takes. And now rook here hits two pawns. It's a very logical move, right? Bishop takes pawn, but there's a back rank. Checkmate, you haven't got time to take the pawn. Right? So, rook takes rook, right? Rook takes rook. Now, you can't take either pawn. Again, because of the back rank. Checkmate. So, when you look at the position and you analyse it from just a purely material point of view, we see that white's got uh, six pawns and black's got four. And at this level of play, that's fatal. Right, you, you can't. You can have bishops of opposite colours, but uh, it's very hard to draw. Might have been his best chance, but he played. He played h uh, five. Um, I don't like it, but what else do you do? Uh, could he have played pawn here? Pawn to f six. Would that have been a better move? I think what he was trying to do is to play something vibrant and attacking, right? Right, so he's, he's, he's clearing his space, he's attacking a pawn, he says, answer that. Well, uh, the great uh, uh, Dr. Tarash answered that was rook d3, uh, d6. And now he, he's taking, a, he's, he's pointing out that the bishop is uh, extremely weak, right? And uh, this is where the problem lies in the position. This last pawn is, is attacked. This pawn's attacked and the bishop's attacked. And with that, rook to e6, rook checks, king there, pawn takes pawn, rook checks, king here, right? And rook back, rook to d2. And uh, with that... Um, uh, black uh, black resigned, right? So that was a, a win over the then world champion Dr. Uh, Dr. Emmanuel Lasker by Siegbert Tarash. I've got two other games for you. Uh, we're going to look at a match that was taken place by... Uh, um, I'll have a look at this. Hold on a second. It's, uh, doc, it's uh, against Shigorin. Shigorin. Yeah, so uh, we're looking at Dr. Tarash. He played a match... 22 games. The score was 11 all, right? So it was a hard fought chess match against uh, Mikhail Shigorin. So his name like Mikhail, I imagine he was Russian. So even then, the Russians were playing chess in the 1890s. Uh, I suppose the cold climate, uh, while the Americans were surfing on California Beach, they hadn't, Bobby Fischer wasn't around at that time. Um, they were busy surfing USA and all the rest of it. <laughs> and uh, here we go. Uh, so we're going to have a look at the archives. We're going to go back to this one. And now we're going to look at uh, mum, 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 library. And we're going to look at uh, Shigorin. Mikhail Shigorin. We've got two games. Uh, I'm going to have a look at this one first, I think. Yeah, we'll try that one first. Oh, and uh, I've got to get the... Uh... Right, so I'm going to the chess.com analysis room with this game. Right. Uh, here we go. Right, so uh, uh, this game was... Uh, um, Oh, I think this is game, oh, I can't remember which game number it is, but it's, it's part of their match, right? Part of the match that they played in St. Petersburg, okay? 
So it's played in St. Petersburg. Uh, D4. Um, we've got uh, Sigberg Tarash playing the white pieces. And Mika Mikhail Shigorin is playing the black pieces. This is a passive move, isn't it? E3. This is the way they used to play in the 1800s, late 1800s, knight to f6. Bishop d3. Now, I think modern theorists would say this is a crappy move. Um, if you played that against the grandmaster in modern times, you'd, you'd be rubbing his hands thinking, oh, he doesn't know how to play chess. All right. I don't think this is a good move, mainly because... Uh, uh, black can equalize easily with c5 with the idea of knight c6 and maybe even e5. All right. Uh, so bishop d3 is not recommended, I, I believe. Uh, e6, very, very passive reply. Um, right, so we're uh, Mikhail Shigorin playing black. Knight f3. c5 is played. Now Shigorin's getting active right he's getting active he wants uh white to re if you re if you took that pawn off and the bishop recaptured black had had a fantastic game but no he plays b3 and now suddenly there's a whole lot of questions <laughs> right there's a whole lot of questions here uh for for white to, uh, for, for black to answer he thinks oh hold on this position's sort of a little bit tricky now but uh, it's not, nothing's quite clear. It's a bit uh, obtuse. He played knight c6, and he's consistent. Puts pressure on the d pawn. And he can play bishop d6, and if he can get e5, then he'd be good. So bishop b2 is played. Now uh, white's uh, exerting his power over that e4 square. Pawn takes pawn. He says, all right, then well, I will try to block your diagonal. Right? So in other words, black, what Black's saying is, okay, you got your bishop there, but now I've blocked your diagonal for your bishop. And uh, so now I can just continually continue to develop on my merry way and I sh shouldn't have too many problems. <coughs> But there is one glaring problem in the position. Uh, does anyone see what the glaring problem for black is? Please explain to me, uh, someone in the chat, what is black's worst piece in the position? Because if you're examining a chess position like this, and um, you, you're going to ask yourself, uh, if you're white and you've got a long-term chess plan that you want to develop to win your game, you're going to try to identify where the weaknesses are in, in the opponent's position. So if you were Dr. Tarash and you're playing Mikhail Sugarman, what piece do you think is a bad piece? Mado uh, Gamad uh, Kant says, reckon you'd ever become a GM. Um, um, my, if, I, if I live to about um, 80, it's possible. Uh, 80, I could get my grandmaster title when I turn about 80. I, I tend to do things late in life. I'm getting stronger as I'm getting older. I know it sounds ridiculous, but I am. I'm actually getting stronger as I'm getting older. My blitz chess is not so good, but uh, uh, my understanding of the game is getting stronger. But the problem is that you guys are getting stronger. You've got access to chess engines. So just like I'm improving... Uh, you guys out there, you're all improving too. And if you're watching my YouTube videos and stuff, I'll put the links in. Yes, yeah, so if you're watching my YouTube videos and whatever, uh, you'll you'll see that they, you guys are learning all the time and, and improving at a rapid rate. <coughs> it's just like running. At my, I was watching uh, running productions on YouTube and we're just leaving the story aside for a little bit. But, but it, it's like chess. We're talking about the advancement of mankind. Now, the advancement of mankind has been measured with chess, uh, going right back to when Gary Kasparov played Deep Blue, right, and was the la virtually the last man to beat a, uh, 
a computer world chess champion, right? Now they're unbeatable. But uh, Gary Kasparov was the last human being to uh, battle and win against a world computer chess champion. And after that, the game was over. The super AI took over. Anyway, but we can have our fun as human beings with our humanity and uh, make all the mistakes that we like to make and play um, imperfect chess but beautiful chess and create our own chess art, can't we, right? So uh, that's what it's all about. Life's about uh, enjoying the uh, level that's uh, person personal to you, that chess level that, that you can be happy with and content with. That's more important than winning or losing, right? The name of the game is not winning or losing. Right? It's how you play the game that counts. Right? There we go. Uh, <coughs> anyway, uh, let's see now what happened. Bishop d6, he developed a piece. He says, I want a castle. Now, um, you've got no threats. You've got no threats. So Mikhail Shigorin says, oh, castle, now I'm safe. And Dr. Tarash castles as well. So they both castle. Now knight b5 to d2, he develops a piece. Uh, why would he develop this piece? Well, he, he, he's, he's a bit concerned that black might play knight here, right, followed by f5, right? So uh, if, if it was black's move, he could play knight here and then f5 and have that knight sitting in the middle of the board annoying him. So he wants to play knight to d2 to stop that knight going there. Anyway, bishop d7 was played. <clears throat> finally develops his weakest piece on the board. When I was referring uh, earlier, a few minutes ago, to, oh, can someone tell me which is Black's weakest piece on the board? It was the bishop on c8. And that's often the case with the queen's pawn opening. That the bishop on c8 is always a problem to develop. I find the same thing in my games. So c4 was played. <clears throat> And now white's got an advantage. White controls the central square, e5. <coughs> so out of uh, white's unusual opening, um, black hasn't responded correctly. And uh, white's got an initiative. Rook c8 was played. And rook c1, just develop, he wants to, uh, in case his bishop's attacked, right, uh, he wants to be able to move his bishop back to b1, right. So he plays rook to c1. Now bishop c, uh, f5, I like this move. It's sort of uh, annoying, it's sort of annoying. And it, you know, like, it's, it's, it's a, you might be able to play something like knight here. Anyway, we'll see what takes place. Rook e1 took place. Now you can't play it. There's too many pieces on that square, so you can't really play it now. Knight to e7. Now, he's try, what he's trying to do, he's got a plan. Um, the, uh, Mikhail Shigorin was no fool. He was a strong player. After all, um, Dr. Tarash uh, was probably one of the strongest players in the world, and uh, especially um, at the peak of his career, he probably was the strongest player in the world. As I say, he beat Steinitz three times as he got a bit older and uh, the world champion. And uh, had he played the world champion Steinitz, he may have won the world title. Anyway, Knight E7 was played. And the idea is to play bishop here and activate this bishop. He's only got one bad piece. So Black's developed an excellent chess plan, right? G3. He says, oh, I don't like your chess plan, right? Uh, and with that, Black played this move. I don't like it. Now, White's got an advantage. Uh, maybe this move is okay. Just see what the engine says. 
Uh, they're about the same. They're about the same. Okay, and what about this one? We'll just examine this one. What does the engine say about this one? <clears throat> about the same. <coughs> so the engine says they're all about the same. Knight to e5 was played. And now bishop c6. Excellent move. Bishop b1. Uh, White wants to train his pieces on this king. Oop. On the king. Now he takes the knight. He captures the knight. He finally decides, oh, I better take the knight. What else am I going to do? And White recaptures with the pawn. Now the bishop's influence, the white bishop's influence, is a little bit stronger. And the knight returns. So we've got a case of a, uh, a, a not quite an open position. It's almost semi-open position. And semi-open positions are good for the two bishops. Open positions are even better for the two bishops. <laughs> All right, so, uh, but black... Uh, Black has got a bishop on c6, and as you can see, no doubt some of you are saying, oh, but this is a very strong diagonal. This could come into play, and uh, Black could get checkmating chances. Right. And you're right, too. You have to be very, very careful with the white pieces. G'day, Raphaelis. I want to say hello to my subscriber, uh, Raphaelis. Um, good day, my friend. And I want to say hello to Peter uh, Bakus. Nice channel. Thank you, Peter Bakus. Uh, Queen H5 was played. That's sort of a strange move. Threatens Queen takes pawn. Checkmate. So uh, if uh, this was me and I was playing Blitz chess, well, I would put on the alert alarm. No, I'm not going to put on the alert alarm. I don't want to scare you off. You'll go, to <laughs> you go somewhere else. Anyway, so he played h6, right? And now there's weaknesses there, but not this bishop. Uh, often, if it's on this square, you can take the pawn and get a big attack, can't you? Right? But how do you get an attack in this position? Well, rook d8 was played. He wants to just put a, it's a subtle move. He's putting a rook on the same line as the queen, <coughs> and he knows that uh, he would love to, uh, uh, if the knight, say the knight moves here, he might be able to play knight here, right? I'll show you what I mean. If black played knight there, white could play knight here. He can't take the knight because rook takes queen, right? And the whole idea is the knight might want to go in there with a big check, and that would be a real big problem. So um, it's a good move. So rook d1, excellent move. Queen e8. He doesn't like his queen on this line. Okay. The queen returns to e2. Uh, black might have been threatening pawn here. <coughs> and if, in this position, if black could play pawn here, you could not take the uh, pawn on passant because of the queen. So uh, then black could recover and try to Hang in there and dig in deep with the end game, right? And uh, Dr. Tarash didn't like that. So he moved his queen back to e2. And probably wants to redirect his queen here and threaten checkmate that way. Uh, knight c5 is played. That stops the uh, queen going here. Excellent idea. Pawn takes pawn. Now we have a problem. Houston, we've got a problem. Bishop takes pawn. Was knight takes pawn better? Probably not. He wants to be able to take pieces off if they go there. Get a big swap and he'd be very happy. Knight c5. Now this knight, this is a good move. He wants to play knight to d6 and attack the queen and the rook. Okay. In chess, uh, a lot of chess 
tutors, coaches, and uh, grandmasters will tell you. It's an old saying, if you can put a knight on D6, you can go to sleep. That's true. That's what they say. If you put a knight on D6, you can go to sleep. In other words, it's such a, usually a, such a powerful idea, you know, in, in a lot of positions, that uh, you put a knight on D6, it virtually wins the game. You, what they mean by you can go to sleep, you can win the game half asleep. It's so easy to play. Okay, so knight does go to d6. And now there's a threat there. It's a double threat. It's He's threatening the, not the uh, rook. Now you've got to play rook here. Right, but the trouble is all the pieces are lined up on this file. Now have a look at what he plays. Rook d8. He's missed something. What has he missed? <sighs> well, he's missed this move. Rook c1, and that's the winning move. He was just under such tremendous pressure that he, he couldn't handle it anymore. Now, if you play pawn here to protect the knight, a pawn will just pin and you, you can't save it, right? So you can't save it with a pawn move. And if you move your queen over here, he, he can pin you with the bishop. And then the knight's gone again, right? So, uh, and he's also threatening queen here with a checkmate, and the knight's gone again. So there's all sorts of problems now. So uh, the position is lost. So uh, with that, he just plays g6, and he says, oh, to hell with it, the knight's gone anyway. And he plays b4, and he attacks the queen. He says, oh, maybe I can just confuse him, and he might make a mistake. I'll just play a few more moves. So queen went to d2. He played b6, takes the knight, takes, and he pinched the h-pawn. <coughs> With that, he's just going for the king. He's got the extra piece. He's still got all the attacking pieces. He played bishop hits queen. Now, you've got to take it because the bishop's attacked as well. It's a double attack. Rook takes pawn. He decides, so rook takes bishop. He decides, well, um, I don't like all the checkmates down there. I'll just try to take the two pieces for the queen. Because if I, uh, this is what he's thinking. He's thinking, oh, no, if I take this uh, bishop, the knight takes back. And you can't stop knight here or knight there, checkmate. So checkmate that way or checkmate that way. And he says, oh, what do I do? He says, oh, well, I'm desperate. I'll take that. Bishop takes bishop, knight takes bishop, and uh, black's got four pieces and white's got four, but he's only got a um, he's only got a, a damn knight for yeah he's only got a, uh, a sorry a bishop for his queen, so the knight moves back. It's just threatening the checkmate again. Bishop takes knight, rook takes. It's just threatening a checkmate again over here with the queen check. And so with that, um, Black resigned. So the uh, Sugarin lo lost that game. But uh, I've got one more game. So if you can just be patient with me, I've got one more Dr. Tarash game. And it's probably uh, a very beautiful finish. You're going to enjoy this. You'll enjoy love this game. I've specially chosen this game because it's got a lovely ending to it. And you will enjoy it, right? If you like attacking chess, you'll love this game, right? Okay, so uh, if, if you don't love it, well, you can throw tomatoes at me, right? Or at the screen, at your computer screen. Right. Uh, here we go, archive. Right, uh, library. Shigurin. <coughs> this one. Right. <clears throat> okay, this is from round five of the match, a 22-game match that was played with uh, Mikhail Shigarin in St. Petersburg, I believe. And uh, see, the doctor, because of his medical practice, he often wanted people to, to play him where he lived, right? 
right? So, um, because he, he wanted to look after his patients, right? Um, okay, so uh, that, that was, uh, he was pretty, pretty true to that. He had a family to, to raise. And there was, you know, there wasn't modern forms of transport in those days. I, it's not like you could just jump on an aeroplane and fly to a different country and be there in a few hours. Okay, so um, it, it, it wasn't easy at all. Anyway, uh, we've got um, T Dr. Tarash playing the white pieces and Mikhail Shigarin playing the black pieces. It's a King's Pawn opening. And I did say that with the Rye Lopez, Dr. Tarash was quite effective. He was very effective. He was ahead of his time. He, he played this opening really well. Um, and I, I looked at the 22-game match against Shigorin, and uh, where Dr. Tarash fell apart was when he was playing the black pieces, he kept playing the French defence. He won the first game, I think, that he played the French defence. But uh, Dr. Tarash, I think, was a very stubborn man. And so when he lost it with the French defence, instead of regrouping and thinking, I'll change tactic, he said, oh, no, 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 I'm an expert in the French defence. Well, Shigarin punished his French defence later on in the match and, and pulled back so that the final score was 11 all out of 22 games. Knight c3 was played. And this looks like a passive move to me. I looked at it and I thought, that looks passive. But it's not, it's not passive at all. Watch what happens. He played bishop to knight five, right? And a lot of players play this and they want to castle quickly. And people say, oh no, he's attacking the knight. And they try to defend with d3. No, knight d5. Straight away he says, oh, that's it. I'm coming to get you. And uh, Shigarin looked at this and he thought, oh, uh, I don't like this. Um, Black wants to take my knight and win my bishop. So he moved his bishop away. He says, oh, now I can take your e-pawn or whatever. So he castles. He said, yeah, you take the e-pawn. I'll be able to play rook e1, hit your knight, and I'll blast you straight through the middle. <coughs> so Shigorin plays bishop, uh, b5. And bishop b3 is played. And White's got a very good variation of the uh, Roy Lopez. At this stage, White's got a massive advantage. Not a small advantage, a massive advantage. D, D3, because at this stage, they, they uh, weren't aware of all the uh, theory. D, D3, he's just simply threatening Bishop here and uh, smashing the king. He, he played Bishop G4. You're going to love this next move. He played c3. Now with the bishop, in the Roy Lopez, in the modern theory, are the bishop, bishops here in some other variations and stuff. And uh, so c3 is a very useful move in the uh, Roy Lopez, as we know, particularly against the marshal and stuff like that. Knight e7 was played. Let's go back. White's winning, right? White's got a big advantage, but knight e7's played, right? And suddenly, the game's over, according to the engine. The engine says, oh, White's got him. So what does he play? Knight takes e4. Look at that. He gives him the coin. And you know what? He doesn't take it either. He doesn't take the coin. Now, um, big question is, why can't he take the queen? I looked at this too and I thought, hold on a minute, what the hell's going on here? I thought, what, what, what the hell's going on here? I thought, something strange is going on here. Okay, so uh, I, I can't see it for the life of me. Uh, this is complicated, and uh, I can't see it. I can't see it. I'll, I'll be honest. I can't see why he can't take the coin. 
Now let's have a look. If he takes the queen, what does the engine say? The engine says that white's still winning. So, if you, how does white win if you take the queen? If you take the coin, how does white win? Well, examine all checks and captures. Is it knight takes knight check? Can't be knight takes knight check. The engine says it is. Oh, if pawn takes knight, bishop takes pawn check, king here, and checkmate. Dr. Tarash, what a game. Did you see that? Took me a while to see it. I had to examine all checks and captures, and that's what I always say to all the beginners that come to my chess channel. Examine all checks and captures, okay? Now, I, I knew of a uh, another book trap where um, you can pl play this queen sacrifice and you take check and you get a knight checkmate on d5. But I, I'm looking at the position I could not for the life of me see the bishop to h6 check. Isn't that fantastic in this position? Right, let's go back. Dr. Tarash looked at the board and he played knight takes e5. What a master move! <sighs> okay, so knight takes e5. You can't take. Right, knight takes pawn. Okay, now if you play knight takes knight in the middle, you can just play knight takes bishop and you win. Okay, just a lovely game. White squares are dominant, it's all over. So knight takes pawn. His opponent played pawn takes knight. And he says, all right, you're still going to win the game. You won a pawn, right? So he says, okay, well, I'm going to get my piece back and my piece down. Black's got extra. So he takes with check. Pawn takes and queen takes bishop. So white's got a completely dominating position on the white squares. But you still have to win the game. Okay? Knight g6 is played. He has to do that. Because queen here is deadly threatening queen takes pawn check. And if you play rook to f8 to defend, the bishop will come in on h6, right? The bishop will come in on h6 to finish you off, right? So you've got to play knight to g6. That's forced. And he played bishop d5, and he says, hey, watch out for your castle. <laughs> so he moved his castle, and he says, oh, I don't like this position. Mikhail Shigarin would be saying, I need open lines. I'm going to get open lines for my pieces, or I'm going to get killed. And you know what? Dr. Tarash was thinking the same thing. I need open lines for my pieces, not because I, I'm going to get killed, but because I want to kill. Right? He wants to kill his opponent. Pawn to c3 was played. He wants to get active pieces. He doesn't care about material anymore. He knows it's important that perhaps in some variation uh, he might be able to get a check here and win that bishop, right? Bishop takes pawn check, king moves, e7. He wants, he's trying to, a cheap trick, a queen check and take the bishop. Cheap trick, he says, I might be able to get out alive. He moves his bishop back. No cheap tricks, Shigorin. No cheap tricks against Dr. Tarash. 
So he played B5. He says, I need more open lines. I'm desperate. He's trying to do anything to get the activity for his pieces. But uh, Dr. Tarash says, no, 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 I'm coming for you. He, played, he gave him a check. He moved the king. And he took with the knight. He wants an attack on the queen. So he's defending his F pawn. He's uh, attacking the D pawn. He's attacking this pawn twice. So black is trying everything he can to uh, thwart white's play. Queen H5 has played. The pressure on the on the pawn. Now knight takes pawn can't be played because the queen takes pawn check. It's it's a killer. And pawn here is threatened. Pawn to D4 is threatened. It's a massive threat. So he moved the knight back to, to, to parry the threat. Now comes a bombshell in the position. Rook takes F6. F6 right? So uh, the king takes back. And he says, right, well, I'll give you a check. And he says, oh, all right, well, I don't want to go in the middle. I don't want to lose my queen or get checkmated. So I'm going back here. Now queen to h6 check. King back. And now look at this move. Rook here, threatening bishop takes pawn check. Now have a look at the pieces. Look at the pieces. Look. Do you realise that black's now got an extra piece? Dr. Tarash has said no. He says, I'm so happy with my position that I don't care about your pieces because you, your rook is in the corner blocking your king and you're getting checkmated. So it doesn't matter about you having an extra piece. So he played rook to f8 to defend against the checkmate. Bishop takes pawn, checkmate was a threat. And then he played bishop to f6, threatening checkmate in one. How do you stop that? Well, he played queen takes bishop. And now the rook takes. Okay, so black's got four pieces. But there's a problem here, and, the, and that's why Shigorin resigned. He can't stop rook takes knight check, right? So if you make any move at all, rook takes knight check, pawn takes and checkmate. It's like an e let I think without the pawn, that's called the e let checkmate. Correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, with the two rooks like that, I think it's an e let checkmate. I'll type the name in there if you want to look it up. Maybe it's named after a guy called E. Paulette, a Frenchman or something like that. I don't know. But I wanted to share that game with you. And that 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 concludes my um, my video on Dr. Siegberg Tarash, the great doctor, um, chess theoretician. Um, chess author um, and a number of his books were transcribed into English. I don't think one of his main ones was but uh, you can always look look them up on eBay or whatever and try to find uh, one of his uh, books. Um, there's always a lot. I, I had a look myself. I thought, oh, there might be a cheap Dr. Tarash book out there but uh, I think they're collector's items, you know. Um, because uh, certainly uh, he was a hero to uh, the German people, right? He was their chess hero. Um, what a mighty game that was. That was just total destruction, wasn't it, right? Uh, with that, I'm going to get out of uh, the uh, chess.com analysis room and uh, I'm going to take on challenges. So. So uh, if anybody would like to have a game, you can challenge me. There we go. And later on, I may uh, be uh, creating that uh, YouTube uh, presentation, uh, sorry, the, the uh, Twitch stream <coughs> on Dr. Trash. It lasted just an hour. I might be posting that to YouTube. So if you want to watch it again, you can watch it uh, on my YouTube uh, links, right? So you'll see in the night bot there, I've got all my links to my YouTube. Go in there, follow that. 
Uh, Krell would like to have a game, my good friend Krell. He's 941 from Australia. Got some papers running around here. I'll tell you what, I nearly, it was very close. I nearly, um, I nearly didn't play tonight. I nearly didn't stream. I was so close. I was, I'm a bit crook. But I sat down, I said, no, nah, I'm going to try to hang in there and do the presentation. Because I, I really wanted to do it. Uh, I wonder if I can play this move. <coughs> That's a sort of a book trap, isn't it? <coughs> I'll take the take the bishop, I think. Just attack the coin. I'm just stopping his attack. I just, once I, once I've got all that done, I can just play uh, and just blast him off the board. Have to be a bit careful. There's still a lot of power coming down here. Have to be very careful. Because Krell could be sneaky. Try to get a sneaky move in. I can play knight here. Get rid of another defender. I could, this way I could activate my queen. I've got a nice attack down here. Well, I'm playing rook here. It gives my king an escape square. At the same time, it, de it develops a piece there. Well, I've got to check here. Now, this bishop covers that square. Right, and now is that queen covers that square, so he's got a problem. Now I can check him here. Let's see, and he's only got one square, <coughs> and that should be checkmate. So there's a check there, checkmate. How's that? Hey, that was nice. So all we did was we uh, um, deterred. He wants a rematch. We'll give him a rematch. Uh, Krell has uh, been very kind. He's uh, gifted my channel uh, a few times, and uh, he's gifted subs to the channel, and uh, he's he's a good subscriber and a good friend. So, Krell Seven is his name. He's from Australia, and he's a champion. He's nine hundred and forty-one rating, but. Uh, he plays me. Why does he play me? You might say, oh, but John, you're 2132. God, it should be 2200 at least. Um, but uh, I want to put my bishop in there. That's 
that's my plan. Now he, he can, oh yeah, now, now I can do it. See? That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to lock my bishop in there. Just to restrict his position a little bit. Now I want to give him a check. Because he's been a very naughty boy. And <laughs> so I want to take his rook off. Teach him a lesson. I can't ta I can't give him the check because he can take it because he's on my coin. So I've got to just quietly retreat somewhere. Um, queen here probably. And now I've got a lovely game. Now I, I could take with the queen, but he might play king here. So I'm going to take with the knight, and I've got a lovely knight in on d6. Now, what did I tell you in the presentation about uh, Dr. Tarash? Well, I did say, didn't I? If you put a knight on d6, you can go to sleep. Do you remember that? I said that in the game that we uh, with Dr. Tarash. I said, if you put a knight in on d6, you can go to sleep. So I'm going to castle. And that protects the knight on d6. Still important for me to um, uh, develop my pieces and try to get an attack as quick as possible. If I was to uh, try to identify where his weaknesses are, I can see this square here, right? And if I can get the queen there, like the queen here or here or there, it's three moves. But maybe there's something faster, I don't know. Pawn here or here, it takes check. You stick a rook here, that's four moves, isn't it? So that's what you're always looking at in these types of positions. How do you finish him off? How do you finish him off? Oh, I found the move. I found the move to finish him off. <laughs> That, that's the move, right? Because after pawn takes pawn, pawn takes, I check him and it kills him, right? But now he's in a bad position. He wants he wants to give me a, a quick check. Well, I can play pawn here and chase him away. Oh, he doesn't like the game. He says, I don't like this. But still, he's still stuck with the knight um, killing him. The knight's still killing him. Oh, his rook's badly placed now. Oh, look at that check. That's a big check. So I did my rook lift here because he gives me a check here. I can just put my rook in. And I just say, well, I'm not, I don't care. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Attack me with the pawn or take it off? And now I'll check you here. I'll take a rook. And now we have a look at his position. There's nothing he can do. He can't even move. I play king here, just threaten to take his pawn off. I come here and I'll take his pawn off. I'm actually playing with the king, right? His rook's got no squares. He can't move his king. He can't move his rook. Can't move his king. I'll take a pawn off. And I'm threatening checkmate. Can you see the checkmate? One. Checkmate. Can't stop it. Wasn't that simple? So the king move moving forward, the active king, was the knockout blow. Checkmate. And that's how you play the end game. And don't forget, you put a knight on d6, you can go to sleep. That's right, you can go to sleep. Any other challenges? Don't forget, you can challenge me. The challenge is in the night bot there, in the uh, chat. I want to say hello to uh, 
everybody to the 107 viewers watching. I want to thank all those viewers that watched the presentation about Dr. Siegberg Tarash. Um, I want to say hello to Raphaelis, to Peter Balkus, to Fluffy Bunny UK, to the Golden Cookie 2004, to Ali Bal Barki, to Fluffy Bunny, of course, JRD88, and uh, Krell54, my subscriber with Prime. Um, nice to see you, my dear friend. Always good to see Krell54. You can always play another game. Or I can play a game. I played from Moise. He's 2,112. He's from Spain. So just get a Sicilian running. I should play a Ray Lopez, shouldn't I? Um, in honour of the great uh, Tarash. Yeah, no D6 check. Uh, I'll put a knight on d6 so you can go to sleep, remember? Mm -hmm. So I'm just threatening knight takes queen and threatening knight takes pawn. And I'm saying to him, what are you going to do about your e pawn? What are you going to do about it? I'm going to take it off. Is there something you can do to save your e pawn? So he, he plays queen there. So I can just take his queen, can't I, right? And just sna snatch a pawn. Now it's an extra pawn. So now I'm going to play pawn here. I'm going to try to hold it. Always dangerous. Take that knight. I don't want to take it, but I, I think I should. Because if I take the knight, I can then push the e pawn. Remember, I've got an extra e pawn. Now, uh, I can play rook here. He wants to play knight here and attack the two rooks. So, uh, I can pl I've got several moves I can play, but rook here looks like the best move. It just develops a rook. And now I can just play pawn here. Attack his knight. He, he's going there. Well, I don't know about that move. He's, uh, I can play pawn hits bishop. So I'm just expanding my uh, pawn structure. He's going there. Um, I'm going to go there. All right, I'll go here. I don't like that move too much. But anyway, I will. I'll go bishop d3. I want to play rook hits knight. That's my plan. And he's on, he's on, he's on my piece. So I can, take, I can take the knight off, but I don't want to. He's got a bad knight. Got a bad night. It's got bad pawn structure too. <coughs> Ouch, he tried to keep his pawn structure and lost his rook. A uh, bishop, knight, lost his knight. <coughs> He's only got one move. Um, oh, he's got a couple. The 
So you can get a little bit of material back, but he's just still a piece down. It's not enough. My pawn's going to power through. He's trying to work out what the best move is. He's got several moves. He's got bishop takes h-pawn. He's got rook to d4. He doesn't know which is the best move. But none, none of them are going to save him. Doesn't matter what he does. But admitted, admittedly, he does get a few pawns back. I've got six, he's got five. He may win two pawns, but uh, it's, it's pretty bad. Um, where, where's ba where's Bal Balbacti or whatever his name was? We had a challenge there. Krell gifted a tier one sub to the community. Thank you, Krell. Oh, to Fluffy Bunny UK. We love the Fluffy Bunny. What a lovely name. Hey, Krell, do you like the name Fluffy Bunny? Uh, Patuco19 Chess. Greetings from Argentina. Hello, Argentina. Uh, looking forward to seeing Argentina in the World Soccer Cup when it comes up again. I don't know English, he says, but I see your chess and there is no language to understand how well and simply you play. Oh, that's very kind of him, isn't it? Ali Tubalbaki. Here he is. He wants a game. He's uh, 1,326. He's from France. So we're going, going to play a Roy Lopez, ex except we can't. He can't play the Roy Lopez against the uh, Sicilian. Ah, spoilt everything. We'll play the Roy Lopez. Well, I'm playing the Roy Lopez anyway. Well, it's not really. It's the ne it's a Nies Metidinov variation of Castle. And I play Rookie Rock. That's a mistake. That might have been better. That's a big mistake. This is a killer. It's a positional crushing move, right? Um, most most uh, strong chess players know this type of uh, these type of little tricks. Um, the knight here is good, I think. So you've got problems on your 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 black squares here. Um, remember, I, if I could put a knight on d6 and go to sleep. <coughs> but I'm also threatening the... Uh, oh, by the way, what this is all based on, right? All this is based on the fact this bishop is the weakest square on the board. That's what the whole position is all about. You think, oh, it's about the e-pawn, it's about this square, it's that square. No, 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 no. All these things are caused by this bad bishop. Just so I can point that out to you. <laughs> now, we've got several moves here. Knight checks is probably too premature. Knight d6 is okay, but... There's no reason why we can't take a pawn, is there, right? Why can't we just take a pawn? It's extra material. And uh, that is probably the best best way to go. Right. Because we, we, we've achieved our goal. We've, we've won some material. Uh, we can, we're still in the game. We've still got good development. All our pieces are on decent squares.
Yeah, so uh, I, I, got, uh, I, I thought this might have been the only chance. Uh, after pawn here, we locked the knight in. See, we locked the knight in. And now that knight has got what's called an outpost. You've heard this term before when the grandmasters are analyzing games. They talk about uh, having an outpost in a certain position. And uh, if you go back to the early West, in the early American West, you know, the old cavalry, the U.S. cavalry, when they go out there and they set up encampments, they used to always have outposts. Because from there, uh, from a military perspective, um, an outpost is somewhere where you can launch an attack, right? That's what an outpost really is. Somewhere where you can launch an attack. So we've now got a very interesting position. And uh, so this is an interesting move. Um, I could take that pawn, but I really want to get my bishop working. Uh, I'm tempted to do this move. Just to dominate all my black squares, try to dominate the black squares. Can you see what I'm doing? Uh, I'm trying to, I've got space, right? So I'm trying to, contop, I'm like Doctor Who, right? We had uh, Dr. Lasker, Dr. Emmanuel Lasker. We spoke about him. We spoke about, um, we spoke about Dr. Um, Tarash. And now we're talking about Dr. Curtis and Dr. Who. And what does Dr. Who uh, control? Space and time. So I'll check my opponent's uh, temp uh, his heart rate. Hold on a minute. We're just checking his heart rate. Oh no, I think he's dead. I think he's dead. No, I'm I'm not a doctor, but I'm going to take that pawn. He's got some problems here. Remember, I'm on the e pawn now, too. I've got this pawn. Takes with the bishop. Okay. Well, I could uh, attack his attack his bishop. Where's Rook? I want him to get play. I'm going to go there um, because I want to totally, I don't, not even interested in the pawn. I'm going to dominate the squares. I'm going to try to control, to control dominate the central squares right so that's what the name of the game is i believe right going over there um he he wants to get some counterplay down here but uh i can't see any counterplay there i, I can just play pawn here <coughs> I like rook to b1. It's a it's a it's a quiet bridge. It just protects the pawn. I'm not. I, I don't have to do anything. What I got. I don't have to prove anything in this position. <laughs> you see, I'm playing against the weakest piece on the board. That bishop. It looks like a pawn. See how the pawns go like that? It looks like a pawn, that bishop. So powerful is my knight, he can't even grab the open file. The knight covers that square too. So my knight is like a castle at the moment. It's got the, I reckon the knight's got worth about five points in the position. Now we could take this bishop off. I think that's the right move. 
So we eliminated probably his best piece. Okay. Okay, so now it's my move. Um, I can play pawn here and keep my pawn solid. Just pawn here. Or I can play queen to d2. This might be better. He's not threatening anything. I can play uh, knight to e5. Looks good. So it looks like a good square. So you can see how powerful my knights are. <coughs> I've got two knights that can launch an attack now. And the other reason is because I can also move this knight back here and attack the rook. So that, that's the other reason for moving the knight forwards. Trying to put this knight on a more active square that can basically crush him. When knight takes bishop just wins. It threatens his rook and this knight protects that knight. So that's the end of the game. The pressure was just too much. I just play knight back here and hit the rook again. Very simple move. Threatening knight takes pawn here now. I could take the rook, but I don't need to. I can play knight takes pawn. Because I'm attacking the queen, right? So when you see a good move, always look for a better move. Now I could take his rook, but I can also take his pawn. So I could take another pawn, but that could be a bit greedy. Um, I, don't, I, I think your best move is probably uh, knight takes rook. Just take the rook. And now it's my move here. I need to uh, fortify my position with pawn here. So now all I'm doing now is I'm looking after my pawn structure. <clears throat> I've got I've got all the pieces that I need. I can play queen here, try to get an attack. Defend attack defends the knight twice. He wants to play knight to e4. Um I can play knight hits queen, and we're threatening rook takes rook check two. So uh, that stops his knight coming in here too. So it's a dual purpose move. And now the rook becomes activated, right? So we had a quiet rook, now it's an active rook. Remember, we've got a piece up and uh, a queen here on e6 check will be uh, devastating for him. Because the queen check threatens his knight. He'd have to put his knight back. Now we can, we've got several moves here. A check, we've got a check here, <coughs> right? And uh, we could just take the knight off, and uh, everything falls. Rook takes check, and rook here, and that pawn goes, and that pawn goes. That all the pawns fall very quickly. Okay, we're playing um, Baal Barki, number one, 1326. And uh, he was in earlier from France. So I'll say a big hello to France. A big hello to Krell. And thank Krell for gifting a tier one sub to my community. He's gifted a total of five in the channel. So he's one of our top uh, gifters. Thank you, Krell. Yeah, so if you want to join my channel or whatever, you can do so. We love we love our subscribers. Okay.
Oh, Toblerone Toaster, Taste Tester. I gifted a tier one sub. Oh, thank you, Toblerone Taste Tester. And you gave it to Natterbox. Oh, Natterbox, my friend Natterbox. Oh, Toblerone Taste Tester, how, how kind. Um, and, oh, we love Natterbox. You couldn't have chosen a nicer person than Natterbox. Right, you, some good choices here today. Uh, Krell54 uh, gifted a tier one sub to Fluffy, Fluffy Bunny, right? And I love the name Fluffy Bunny. I used to have two rabbits. I used to have Flopsy, Flopsy, that was one of my rabbits, Flopsy. And the other, the other rabbit's name was um, Stanley, Stanley. And Stanley would come into the lounge room and dump his foot. If I was watching a TV, he'd come in. He'd look at me and he'd thump his foot because he wanted to play. He wanted to play. He wanted to have a little game. Little Stanley. He was a lovely rabbit. Had a beautiful nature. I can attack this rook. All right, so it looks like a quiet position. But now this bishop can come back and attack that rook too. So the, the rook has got a problem. It's got nowhere to go. You can see how a quiet position can just fall apart very easily with, you know, like uh, just putting your pieces on the right squares and understanding the position and spotting weaknesses. So if you can spot weaknesses or holes in the position, and it's all about timing as well. So it's all about chess timing. It's, it's, it's the way you develop your pieces. When I play queen c7 here, I was preventing knight to e5, and, and maybe I could play e, e4. Now, this is an interesting move. It's very clever. Because what? why is it a clever move? Well, it's clever from the point of view that um, it... Uh, I'm going to play queen here. This is really getting complicated now. <clears throat> so I'll take the knight, because if I take the knight, I'm still on the bishop, right? And I won a piece. So instead of winning the exchange, if I, if you gave me the, uh, the other piece, He hasn't got really good squares to move to. My knight's not that good. My knight's not that good. Where's he queen go? I don't like it. So I'm going to go back here. I'm just going back. I'm not. To, I'm playing risk-free chess. <coughs> I, I I could have moved, I could have played forwards, but I'm, I want to play risk-free chess. Um, I, I'm going to castle here because remember I've got an extra piece. I don't want to take any risks with my position. I just want to improve my game and. Uh, and basically just win without any risks, right? Um, a safer move for me, uh, this, the castles may not have been the best move. <coughs> a more accurate move by me might have been bishop to e4. It might have been a more accurate move, but uh, it doesn't matter. <coughs> um, I thought bishop f3 was better than that. Uh, that move doesn't cause any problems. I just take it off. My queen's not doing anything here. So I'm going to play queen here. The point is I want to attack these pawns. 
Now we he, because he's got double pawns, right? So I want to attack the pawn structure. And he's threatening a check. Now I can play pawn to rook three. You can play queen to knight six. I can play g6. Oh. I'm just going to play pawn here and cut his rook off. Because right, I'm threatening uh, pawn takes pawn. So I'm happy with my position. He goes there. Well, I'll take the pawn off. And I'll just take the rook with check. Uh, get a rook working. <clears throat> develop my rook. And uh, queen takes pawn, threatens checkmate down here. And then just to finish him off, I only need to play like knight here and knight there or something. Virtually any moves in this position win. Black's got perfect safety for his king. The white king's in trouble. That's right. And now um, I can check him. <coughs> Just take the pieces off. That's the safest way to play the game. And uh, just move the king up and take all the pawns off. So that's all we do. Just move the king up and take all the pawns off. We've got six pawns. He's got two, four, five pawns. And we've got a knight to kill him. Okay, so thank you, Balbaki. I hope you found that game instructive. Uh, Buffus, ja, 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 jiggity, 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 John Curtis, Buffus says. Brock Steady, good morning, John. Oh, good morning. It's, uh, I'll, tell you, I'll put the time here for you. There you go. So it's uh, May 9th, 2022, 10.45 p.m. here in Australia. Okay. And we've been streaming for uh, nearly two hours, an hour and three quarters, I think. As I said, I'm not feeling well tonight, so uh, I, I might have to end my stream a wee bit early. But uh, uh, I want to thank everyone for coming in. I want to thank Toblerone Taste Tester for giving, giving a first gift sub in the channel. <laughs> Toblerone Taste Tester, you rock, buddy. And um, and uh, I want to thank uh, uh, Natterbox for being the recipient of the gift, and uh, I want to I want to thank uh, my good friend uh, Krell Fifty Four for giving it to Fluffy Bunny, the little Fluffy Bunny. Okay. Um, yeah. So we've got hundred and two viewers at the moment, and uh, see what's going on. I'm going to play a three-minute game, a 2140 rating. See if I can get this rating a bit higher for you. Um, opponent uh, 2158, we're looking at Wales. Oh, I know what's happening. 10.47 p.m. You, is it the is it, is it Ukrainian Championship? Oh, you know, with Naroditsky and that is on now on chess. So uh, that might be worth a bit of a peekaboo. Um, what do you reckon? This move wasn't so good.
And he doesn't want to give me all these pawns. I've got an open file. Look at that. There's a check. I got a queen, two ton car moon. Oh, that's his name, two ton car moon, like in Tutankhamun. Uh, where's the checkmate? Oh, that'll do. There we go. Wasn't that a nice game? Two ton car moon. Oh, we beat him anyway. Um, with that, I think uh, I might have to uh, go and raid the chess, the chess channel, right? Uh, yeah, we're going to raid chess, right? And uh, who is there tonight? Looks like we've got uh, Grandmaster Irina Crush. Uh, Grandmaster Irina Crush.